Thanks for checking out the show review. This is for the 2019 show Nosferatu. Nosferatu. Uh, it's a license plate, just so people don't know. Or if people don't know. Uh, anyway, this is currently available on the Shutter streaming service. Um, it originally ran on the AMC channel, which, if people don't know, Shudder is owned by AMC, so that's why they end up getting some of the horror stuff that ran on AMC, like Nosferatu, like um, Eli Ross History of Horror, stuff like that. So, uh, at the top of this, if people are watching it and they've already seen the first season of Nosferatu, it has been renewed for a second season, um, which I'm happy about. I did enjoy this. I'll, t I'll let you know up front. If you have not seen it, um, it's fine to watch this review because I'm not going to be giving spoilers since it's so new. I'm just going to kind of talk about my thoughts on it without giving spoilers, but I'm going to give you a lot of stuff. So if you have seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about as well, and it'll be a good breakdown for you. Kind of walk in that line. So the show is actually based on a book by Joe Hill. If people don't know, Joe Hill is Stephen King's son, uh, but became very successful on his own. He didn't make it known until maybe about 10 years into his uh, writing career that he was uh, Stephen King's son. That's why he had changed his last name. He wanted to make, make it on his own. And since then, he has been, you know, writing a lot of books that have gotten pretty high acclaim. So he had this book called Nosferatu. It's a very thick book. I actually looked at reading it at one point, and I was like, I'm so behind on a bunch of other books. I can't get this right now, but maybe down the road, because it's so thick. It's like this. It's huge, and I'm not a fast reader, and I have all these books to get to, so I was like, I better do those first, and maybe I'll do this. But in the meantime, I was like, I kind of really want to check out this story, so I watched it on Shudder, and um, I'm glad that I did. I think they did a good job pulling it off. It would be good to know what's in the book versus what's in the show. I have a friend who read the book, and he had watched uh, the first two episodes of the show, and he said that the book is crazy but really good. So I want to get to it at some point. But anyway, so I have some notes in here, but I'm going to try and you know do a little bit of off-the-cuff talking about it as well. But I'm going to... I'll kind of bounce between. So overall, I have to say that I like this show because it has a lot of interesting subtext to it. There are a lot, there's a lot of stuff at play in this, especially with the relationships of characters within it, um, that it's more than face value. Like you really have to think about, oh, well, what's really going on in this moment? Um, and think about kind of the inner workings and what's going on. You know, kind of looking further, looking a little bit deeper and seeing underlying themes. And one of the big themes in it is trauma. And it's trauma in the sense of like actual physical trauma sometimes, but it's trauma in the sense mainly of like family trauma and like the issues that happen with broken families, uh, families that are actually, you know, no longer together versus families that are still together but not functional and really focusing on the children and how that impacts the children. So, you know, those types of things can be done kind of like overdone and done poorly, but I like the way it's done in this, and I, I'm i obviously going to attribute that to Joe Hill because I'm assuming it's the way it is in the book, is it's complicated. And a lot of times with these types of themes, people, they put it into a show, they put it into a movie, they put it into a book, and they simplify things. They make it so that, okay, so in the relationship, this is the parent who's all bad, and this is the parent who's all good. This show does not do that. You feel very conflicted about basically everyone in it. Yeah, basically everyone, pretty much. Especially when you get to the very end and there's kind of like a, a final, um, really short episode. It's like 13 minutes or something that kind of like breaks down the main bad guy a little bit. And you get it. Like you feel like you feel for characters, but then you also look at them at the same time and say, ah, oh, God, that's a really bad decision or they just did something terrible or they're a terrible person in this instance. They're a really good person in this instance. And it's muddy. It's gray matter. It's, it's a gray area. And I love that. I love when movies and shows do that for you because it's so easy to just be like, this person's good. This person's bad. But that's not real life. And I like it when it's a reflection of real life and it makes you feel the emotions of, man, I really like this person. And then the next moment being like, man, I really don't like this person. And it gives you a good representation of what the the children or what the main character, mainly um, Vic McQueen, what she goes through in her life. Like it makes you as an audience member get a really good taste of like, I see where she's torn here. I see where she's having problems making up her mind on what to do with her parents because they are both awesome 
in certain ways, and they're both terrible in certain ways, and you feel torn just like she feels torn, and it's it's really well done. And I also have to say bravo to all the people involved in making the show because, you know, while I'm saying that that has to do with Joe Hill's writing, you also have to do the screenplay and you have to shoot it and you have to act it. And they brought it to the screen really well, in my opinion. It translates well. And on that note, it looks really good. The directing is excellent. The acting is really excellent. Um, I can think about like a few moments here or there where the acting drops a little bit, but for the most part, very good acting. Um, one of the things that I don't like about the acting, though, is the main guy, I forget his name, You've seen, he's been in the show like Hero, Heroes and um, a few other things. You'll know him if you see him because he's been in a lot. Oh, he was Spock in the newer um, Star Trek films. He does, he, he's this character who's like, sometimes he's young and sometimes he's an old man in the show. And when he plays the old man in like full special effects makeup, practical effects makeup, he, the old man voice he does sounds terrible. It sounds like overwrought and over the top and terrible. But his acting other than that is great. Like he does a great job. So that's just one of my main issues. And on that, since I'm already talking about it, the practical effects to make him look like an old man look really, really good. There's only one moment in it. It's in like the final full length episode where it's a very, very close up shot of his face. And you can see that it's a prosthetic, but you have to like look at it for a while. And and other than it being like a super tight close up, you don't notice that it's really prosthetic. It's it's impressive. It looks good. So the you know the the logistics of getting this done and everything that went into the show I think was executed extremely well. I think it's really just gonna come down to if you like it or not has to do with do you like the underlying story and do you like that it goes kind of slow from time to time, but it's necessary. Like that, I don't think that there were any stints in it that were slow that felt like, oh my gosh, they're just trying to fill time or anything like that, which is a pretty awesome thing because they have 11 full-length episodes and then that little like 13-minute thing. So it's a pretty big triumph that I watched it and didn't really feel like things were dragging on necessarily because that has a tendency to happen with shows, especially ones that are on channels on cable like this was for AMC, so... You know, um, but yeah, I really liked it, and uh, I thought it was I thought it was well done. So let me go over some of my notes here. Um, the characters and relationships are complicated, which is what I was saying. So it makes it hard to take sides. I mean, you can from moment to moment, like I was talking about, but you end up switching on the characters, and I, I love the complexity of the characters. The show is so much about trauma in many ways. And how people deal with it. Yeah, I did talk about the trauma, but it's also about how people deal with their trauma and also how people don't deal with their trauma and what the consequences of both of those can end up being. Um, and then I just kind of put a note that everyone refuses help because they'd seem weak. That's kind of a societal thing. A lot of people don't want to ask for help with whatever issues they're having, physical or emotional or mental or whatever, just because you'll seem like a weak person and everyone wants to seem like a strong person. Um, it also deals with addiction and the tie-in that trauma has with addiction sometimes. And that's personal addiction, but that's also uh, addiction that touches other people. So that's another aspect of it. Like I'm saying, like if you can tell, there's a lot at play in this film or in this show. Uh, it makes points about disparity in wealth and how that affects a child's upbringing. That's another strong theme in this because the main character, you know, she doesn't come from a wealthy family or anything like that. So... Yeah, uh, there's a theme of trying to be yourself and go your own way while trying to also please your parents, which is hard when everyone involved has some self-esteem issues. That's another thing that goes on where, you know, even when when people are kids, when you're a teenager, I'll put it that way. Like when you're a teenager, you're trying to figure out how your life is, is going to shape up, what road you're going to take to get wherever you're going to end up going. And when your parents have very strong opinions about what they think you should do and they're not supportive in that, they just want to tell you, this is what I think you should do, you know, it becomes hard because it's like, I want to listen to my parents, but I also feel like I should be doing this. And there's a lot of, of that in the film, which I think is written well and, and played out well. And it could, you know, once again, kind of like with how the characters are done, it could be something where they simplified it and made it really easy but they didn't, and I appreciate that. 
Uh, there's also a theme of kind of like an old patriarchal society fighting against a newer, more emotional and, and emotionally involved society, one that accepts different roles for people than are like traditional roles basically and so i kind of see the good the good guy in the in the in the show i don't know why i'm doing that but the the protagonist in the show is basically the new society that's kind of evolved and the antagonist of the show is kind of the old traditional ways of doing things that they're trying to hold on to and they're trying to make everyone accountable for that basically in a messed up way obviously um there's a character there's one particular particular character in this whose backstory is too much like the way they do it it's super over the top in your face not subtle and it really should have been subtle because you know with a lot of things don't be the audience over the head with it like be subtle about it they'll pick up on it it was over the top this character's backstory is way over the top people who have already seen it and are watching this will know what i'm talking about it was just too much like not in the sense of i was like oh that's that's like too scary or too emotional or whatever i just thought it would like i i, I had to like roll my eyes basically because i was just like really you you had to go that hard on it like we get it we get it stop we get it so yeah but um uh there's a character uh so there's a character who's supposed to have a stutter in this at some point and at first i was watching i was just like why is this person like they didn't have a stutter then they did have a stutter so i kind of wrote it down as like being a problem i'm like this is coming and going but there actually is a reason for that so just know there's a reason for that um there's a character's involvement in this that you actually particularly feel bad about actually there's a lot of stuff that you feel bad about in this film uh, because of that complexity of characters where you're just like, oh, you know, I feel for this person, but they're also doing terrible things. So there's a lot of those moments. But there's one character in particular that you feel particularly bad for at times where you're just like, ah, and you'll know why. You'll understand. And then the last thing I kind of wanted to say about this is this doesn't give anything away. It's not a spoiler because I said I'm not doing spoilers on this, but... There are these concepts of strong creatives, this is what they call them, strong creatives and inscapes that are really good concepts that are at play in the main story of this. Awesome. Um, I think for me personally, what makes this so good, other than what I've already talked about with, you know, the characters being really complex and it just looking really good and everything being pulled off really well and seeming like it flows well. I think it's also that the underlying story is very interesting to me. Uh, it's one that I, I'm not like, while I'm watching it, I'm not sure where it's going necessarily. And there are tons of shows where I'm like, I know exactly where this is going. This is very cliched. It's a, it's a, like a recycled story. And this one is not that it's very original. It's, doing its own thing for sure and it has a lot of intrigue baked into it where you're like let's ad adventure further let's let's investigate this and you, and you're doing that with the characters so you're just like i'm not 100 percent sure where this is going and i'm very interested to see what happens and i think they ended it in a very good way that kind of, that does set it up for the second season obviously because they're doing a second season so i'm very excited that they got a second season for this um just makes me want to read the book now really makes me want to check out that book but i have a lot of other stuff to work through first but anyway so giving this show a star rating nosferatu uh out of five stars with half stars in play it's not unbelievably phenomenal but it is quite solid um i'm gonna give it a four stars i like it at four stars it is good i highly recommend it to anyone watching this who hasn't watched it already go check it out i recommend uh you need shutter or you might be able to get it through your regular cable on demand. I don't know how long those things stick around. But anyway, um, thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. If you could do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. Literally painless. Takes you guys like a second. It can mean a lot for my channel growth. And that's what I'm looking for, to engage with people more. Put some comments down there. Let me know your thoughts on the show if you've seen it or your thoughts as you go through it, which would be kind of cool if you just kept putting on comments uh, as you were going through episodes. would be sweet. But anyway, the big thing is hit that, I was going to say 
hit that subscribe and then i started thinking about the like thing you can hit the like if you want to but hit the subscribe is the big thing thank you for checking this out regardless i really appreciate that and until next time keep it brutal